to the Essentials Club. As you can tell, we're in a different surrounding and I have a beautiful friend with me, Jahan, here today. Hello. So I have driven up from the Sunshine Coast to catch up with her and we are going to work on a collaborative DIY project, giving mm -hmm. some new life to some furniture that she's had laying around. And I thought I'd come and help her out and she could teach me some ways around of using tools as I have no idea what I'm doing in that world. And also I think the world just needs to know more about her and her amazing skills and projects. So here yeah, she is. <laughs> Thank you for that very nice introduction. So my name is Jahan, as Maddie just said, and I have a website called Small Kitchen. And basically I am a home cook and I love cooking, but recently I've been getting into home DIYs a little bit more because we're renovating a few spaces in our house. And um, one particular area is our front deck. So at the moment we're planning an outdoor kitchen and a lounge area. And I've been looking <laughs> for a really long time for the perfect coffee table. And I don't need one, I need two. So I thought why buy when I could DIY? And so basically this is why we're here today. Yeah, we just thought this might be a fun idea and A good excuse off. to have a margarita together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last night we had a few. It was, it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're learning along the way as well. These are two projects that we've never done before. So we have one coffee table that will go in between a long sofa and two armchairs. And then another coffee table that would go in between the two armchairs as well. We're upcycling old furniture. Yeah. We'll be making one table using an old cylinder table that I've had for about two years. It's been collecting dust in the garage at home and my husband's so sick of seeing them. We really wanted to get some dowels and create something with them and do some experimentation with some grout as well. So that's yeah. the first table. Um, but the second table we're actually doing is more of a chubby table. We're using furniture that I've had, again, lying in the garage. Garage. We're also using the tabletop of a table that I found at my local tip shop for $8 and we're tiling the whole thing. So today we're going to take you through the steps of what works for us in bringing these projects to life and then also Jahan will have the blog version over on her site so I will link that below if you prefer to read through the steps as well. If you want to follow along this is what you'll need to join in otherwise enjoy watching this come to life. First up just a little side note about sourcing tips. For the base of each project we use Jahan's existing cylinder side tables. These can still be found at Kmart but if you don't want to source a big corp like that you could always search marketplace or something similar for secondhand cylinder tables tubes or pillars also with the dowel we went with the full circular pieces but to keep costs down you could always go for the semicircle ones we were just unsure of how that flat under section would sit on the curved surface so we opted for the full ones so they'd mold a bit better but of course that bumps up the final price so the choice is totally up to you and what you feel most comfortable doing and lastly you should just be able to get any of these tools and general supplies from your local hardware store otherwise just go digging around through your parents or friends garages and see what you can borrow just like what I did with Jahan. <laughs> there are some overlapping items so no matter what project you're doing you will need at least two liters of pre-mixed grout in the bright white, some high strength liquid nails, a hacksaw, jigsaw, sanding sheet, ruler, pencil, just a random disposable spoon, two clamps and a measuring tape. And then specifically if you were doing the fluted slash rendered coffee table you will need one large pillar, some dowels to cover this circular pillar. We ended up getting 10 measuring 2.5 meters long and 2.8 centimeters wide. You can figure out how much dowel you need by measuring the circumference of this and the height of it and then figuring out how many pieces you can fit within the dowel lengths that you can find at your local hardware store. So for us that ended up being 10. You'll also need an MDF sheet and this is going to be the tabletop that sits on top of the pillar so it needs to at least be wide enough to cover that area. Keeping in mind that it will increase in size once you add the dowel around the edge of it. We got an MDF sheet that was 120 centimeters long, 60 centimeters wide and 1.6 centimeters thick. You'll also need some string, some white paint and spray paint, a tile scraper. Then for the second table which is the chubby tiled side table you'll need at least two small circular pillars which we will end up joining together. You'll then also need a circle tabletop that obviously goes on top of the table and is a little bit wider than the base. Conveniently Jahan had a tabletop which was the perfect measurement that we just reused for this project. If you don't conveniently have a tabletop laying around you could also get some MDF sheets and cut a circle out of that to this final size that you want. You'll then need some tiles. We were going for that rough organic look which is why we ended up adding them individually on. If you want that cleaner look go for those like sheets of tiles that you see around and you'll just need to figure out how much you need to cover the surface area of your pillar 
as well as your tabletop. You will need a tile cutter, some tile adhesive, some disposable gloves and a tiling sponge. So for table one, which is the fluted pillar coffee table, we just grabbed the relevant supplies and started trimming down the dowels to the height of the table. We marked a placement out at these measurements along the dowel and then trimmed the pieces down and once we had all of them, we then used our ruler to mark a line on the actual table so that could help indicate a straight line that we would glue the first piece onto because obviously the first one we put on there determines the angle for the rest of them and we wanted them to be nice and straight. We then began the process of adding the glue onto the backside of the dowel, holding it in place onto the pillar where we want it to sit until it felt nice and secure and repeating this process until we filled in the whole section. We did find throughout the process that it was handy putting some objects just at the base of the dowels because it held it in place and meant that they wouldn't fall off while the glue was drying. We continued this around the whole circumference of the base and once we got to the final piece we did realize it didn't quite fit in at its full size so we decided to sand down the final two pieces so that it would fit in there nice and snug. You might get to the same step as well and realize you need to make an adjustment like that. Then for the tabletop we went for a racetrack style which means there is a curved edge on either end so we marked out how far we wanted this circle to come down making sure that it still covered the base of the table. We could then use a string to help draw this circle. We then used our clamps to hold the edges of this piece down as we jigsawed around the line that we have drawn. Obviously we are just working off the side of the table here and we had to make adjustments by unclamping and repositioning it so we could easily access the curved line that we were cutting out. We then repeated this for both sides of the MDF sheet until we had a beautiful oval that we could then place on top of our table. Look how cute that looks! And then sanded down those little curved edges just to make sure that it flowed nicely. Next we grabbed our spray paint and just added a simple coat over the top of this MDF sheet and that will just help in the next step when we do add the rendering to make sure that we don't accidentally see any of the timber coming through. Of course if you don't have access to spray paint you can just use the general paint as well and just add a simple coat. Before committing to grouting the full top section I just wanted to have it a quick trial to make sure I had an idea of you know how to use the grouting and also figure out the finishing pattern that we were originally going to do like a little rainbow pattern with the edge of the tiling spade but we just ended up discovering that we liked the simple and raw textures of just like laying it down and playing with that pattern as you kind of scrape it across. Started adding the render onto the top section. As you can see this first bit that I added on is quite dry and not easily spreading so I ended up putting that back in the bucket, adding more water and creating a more liquid consistency, fluffier finish and also making it so much easier for me to spread it so highly recommend doing that. And then just continued around cleaning up any bits, making sure that I at least covered all the edges of the sheet so that you couldn't see through to it and then began finishing it off by doing my little back and forth patterns to create that that nice minimal texture. We are so happy with how that turned out. So now you can see that we have the fluted bottom and the rendered top all done. I do like the raw finish of the bottom but we were going for an all white look. Obviously if that is your preference you can leave that as the raw timber on the bottom but for the next step we ended up adding a single coat all the way around this base and then adding I think another two more coats of paint and that was our table pretty much done. We let them both dry, placed the tabletop on the base. If you're worried at all about the tabletop moving you can obviously use the liquid nails to glue it down in place. And then my friends you will have a cute rendered and fluted coffee table ready to style up and add to your space. Then for the second project, which is the chubby tiled side table, Jahan had just pre-cut down one of the cylinders so it reached the height that we wanted. We then just used a liquid nail glue to join these two pieces together, held them in place and let them dry. Jahan, the absolute machine, had spent days individually cutting these tiles down. I managed to find about two months ago these beautiful travertine look tiles from the tip shop. Um, they're from Japan, they're absolutely beautiful. I found that you can actually buy a tile cutter and use it at home. Since then I've been on a bit of a journey and I've cut 615 small baby tiles. So once that pillar was ready to go, we grabbed our tile adhesive and a spoon and just individually added that onto the back of each tile. We focused on the bottom row first and spaced them out equally so that we could then just work upwards from there. It ended up being about, I think, half a centimetre gap in between each one. And then we just pretty much sat down, had a chat, continued tiling the whole pillar section, which yes, does involve a bit of effort individually adding on. But as mentioned, we were going for that kind of like raw organic finish. We didn't want that clean cut finish bit as well. You can grab those sheets that already have all the square tiles joined, which will obviously speed up the process, but it does have a bit more of like a linear clean finish. If that is what you want, go for that. 
Once we had completed filling in that section with all the tiles, we set that aside to dry and shifted our focus to the tabletop. As mentioned before, Jahan conveniently had a table already laying aside that she had picked up secondhand from the tip shop, so we removed the top from that and measured out an MDF sheet to then add on top of that so it matched the height of the tiles. We used the liquid nails to attach these together and then began plotting out the placement of the tiles. Then we just went for a grid style. You could opt for many different layouts for this top section. This is just personally what we were drawn to. We filled in all of the main parts. We then used the tile adhesive to then glue these in place and Jahan used her tile cutter to then cut any remaining pieces to fill the circular edge gaps. We repeated the same process for the side edge of the top. Once everything was nice and dried and steady in place, we then grabbed the render or the grout to fill in the gaps of the tiles. So on the container of this, it says every five to 10 minutes, you should grab your sponge and wipe down this surface as it does tend to dry quickly. And obviously that makes it harder to wash off the grout that is sitting on top of the tiles. For us, that meant about every third of the pillar, we would stop and wipe off any excess grout and then continue grouting around the next section. We just need to have a damp sponge and just lightly go over the top of it. So it removes any grout that is sitting on top of the tile, but obviously keeps the grout that is in between the tiles, which gives it that nice clean finish and also holds it all together. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but that essentially looks and sounds like what it does. <laughs> we then continued this process for the tabletop, including all the side edges and kind of the underneath area. And essentially we just had to wait for that all to dry and we had our table all done and ready to go. for us we did it <laughs> <laughs> well i hope you enjoyed watching that process we definitely had a whole heap of fun at bringing that to life for you guys if you love what you saw throughout this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe as i've got plenty more diy videos in the works and also do not forget to jump over to jahan's website and instagram and all that for small if you want some more of her goodness <laughs> <laughs> that's good thanks so much for tuning in and i hope you have a lovely day wherever you are thanks so much for joining in with me jahan love you we, we love you guys soon we love you too <laughs> Oh,